Hi everyone. It's been a while since my last video. Um, I actually haven't been receiving any PSA Pokemon cards. Um, so this is going to be sort of like another kind of video. Um, it's actually going to be one for magic cards. And the main thing is um, I just kind of want to show off some of my collections. Um, in addition to grading, magic cards can be played, right? Like, um, not that many people grade magic cards. Um, grading is more of a Pokemon thing, and magic is more for playing. That's what a lot of people say. And I do think it's one of the better games out there. Uh, for example, I never play Pokemon. It's um, I only collect Pokemon. Magic is more of a collect um, a player's game, and I primor primarily play a format called EDH or Commander, um, in which in which you have a legend, um, and you use that as your commander, and then you build your deck in hundred singleton cards and play against opponents, usually in four player pods. So it's something that I kind of do with my friends a lot. And in addition to uh, playing, I like to pimp out my cards a little bit. I like foils a lot. Um, I like signed cards. And um, <clears throat> for this return, it's actually going to be a return of signed cards from one particular artist. Uh, this artist's name is John Avon. He is a really big landscape artist from uh, the United Kingdom, and he's one of the more famous um, artists for magic. And yeah, I got like a huge box in today, and I just wanted to show you what exactly I got. Um, this is like something that I sent off more than two months, two or three months ago, um, I think around February, and I just got it back today, so the turnaround time was pretty long. And yeah, it's it's been an ongoing pursuit of mine to have uh, signature cards. It kind of it kind of adds um, personalization and it kind of makes your card even more rare. Sometimes it adds more value, not all the time, um, but they also look better when you play in your decks. And it's just kind of like it makes your deck kind of like what you want it to be. Um, so you can have signed cards, you can have foil cards, you can have white border cards, black border cards. Um, and now with wizards and all their variations, you can get whatever foil you kind of want. Now there's like halo foils and all sorts of random stuff. Um, but yeah, this is my whole box. Um, I actually have like even more cards, but um, as you can see, this is a new playmat that I got too. I got this at uh, MagicCon Minneapolis. Uh, it's a li very limited edition one from Ultra Pro, um, and I even got the artist to sign it. And um, the person you see is actually, um, his name's Urza. He's a powerful planeswalker and sometimes the biggest villain of magic, if you know the story's lore. And cool thing is that um, these eyes are actually foil. They look really nice. Um, it's just really cool, because I do have a Urza CDH deck that I play too, which I will also show you in this video, because later on I'm just gonna do some updates and kind of unsleeve and sleeve uh, some of the lands I got. But yeah, let's open up this box. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I just got over a cold, but um, I already sleeve these because, as you know with magic cards, if you leave your cards out and they're not sleeved and they're foil, they will start to bend or curl. And you want to mitigate as much humidity as possible. So that's why I already sleeved everything up. Um, I use Dragon Shield Perfect Fits. These cool guys, and they perfect fit um, cards. I wouldn't recommend this with Pokemon cards because they could leave scratches if you didn't notice a piece of debris in your card and you put it in that sleeve because it's so close. Um, so I would not recommend the only use penny sleeves for Pokemon cards and, and stuff you want to grade. But for cards you want to play with or put in your collection, I feel like perfect fits are the perfect way to go. So I'm using completely new sleeves, so it's a little slippery. I'll just take out a couple cards at a time. But yeah, this is the pretty much big card box that I got back, and I just want to show you some of the cards that I got signed. <clears throat> so yeah, John Avon's signature is actually pretty cool. As you can see, the, the art is really, really nice. Um, previously in Magic, you only had this part, which was the art, and then the rest was like text or 
like a mana symbol or something like that, but <clears throat> um, starting with unglued and then unhinged, full art lands were like the initial hype, and these were like the coolest lands. These came out in unhinged when they first um, got introduced. <clears throat> the, un the unglued ones don't look as good because they're not full art, but these ones actually look full art, and the color really, really shines according to the color of mana. And when the story about these is that when I got these, um, when these came out in Double Masters, and it got it essentially got reprinted because they reprinted the art in Double Masters just so they can sell more packs and VIP packs and stuff. I opened a little bit, but other, but I, I wouldn't be able to open that many right to get the stack of cards. Um, so I bought a lot of them as singles too at the time. They were like five to six bucks. Um, for planes, um, the more expensive ones were the islands, and I got like a huge stack. It was really cool. John Avon signed all of these. Um, he does this through mail, and it's a lot better than going to cons and waiting for him online. Because the most recent Magic Con that I went to, which was Minneapolis, he can only sign like five to six cards at once, and you have to get back in line, and you're pretty much wasting your entire time at the con to sign up. So that's why I mailed these in. But yeah, I have a lot. Like, I already... <clears throat> I actually have even more, but I updated my decks already. But a lot of these planes, these beautiful planes, I got them all gold signed too, because they kind of add more to it. I think the biggest thing I got was, like, I have so many islands. This is only the first stack of islands, but everything was gold signed just once. There are shadow signatures too, but I think one signature is good enough. It was around, like, $3 per signature, so... Um, for this entire box, it costs around like 1k to get signed, in addition to whatever you paid for all these cards, because these weren't cheap at the time, but um, these are kind of just for me. Um, re very rarely will I try to like resell them, um, but if I do have extras, I try to. I usually try to recoup some of the cost because um, if you didn't know already, uh, signatures back then, maybe 10 years ago, they were free. You can get them from artists at um, conventions and Magic Fest and stuff. And they were free. It wasn't until kind of recently they started charging per signature. And to me, it's like it sucks that signatures aren't free anymore because I got some free ones from Christopher Rush like 20 years ago. Um, and I think it's good that it's not free anymore because it kind of like pays back the artists for their work. They usually charge $3 per signature if it's just like regular Sharpie. So it's like 3 to 5 now per Sharpie. But if you want a shadow signature, it can be like average from six to ten dollars like like this person who signed my mat justin alex hernandez this was ten dollars a signature for a shadow on a mat on a card on whatever <clears throat> so it's kind of like before i think i think japanese artists and pokemon don't like people reselling their pokemon cards for money but if the artists are already charging then i mean it's like they're making money and then you can make some money too i think it's fine but there's definitely a market for these too. Uh, I do think, um, as long as it's not too oversaturated, um, you can definitely get into th this too. But this is like not the equivalent of grading cards. It's just that like if you grade magic cards, you can't play them in decks. But then now you have some personalization on your cards, and you can <clears throat> pretty much put them in your deck and show off some bling or something like that. Um, but yeah, these are all my hinge lands. I think I. I have another stack of islands in that box somewhere, but these were the ones I was sorting out. I was actually placing a lot of these in decks already. Like, I have a mono black deck, I put all of these swamps in, so that's why there's so few. Um, I do have red green as well, but it didn't require that many basics because so many other lands were non basics. So, that's my stack of unhinged. Uh, these are the unhinged art from Double Masters. I'll just put these away so they don't fall because they're still very new and slippery so it brings me to the next cards i i pretty much my strategy for getting these things signed was pick up whatever card i could get <laughs> that i own i didn't buy any um but whatever i owned i had a lot of these that were signed like they're all signed by they're all um, drawn by john avon so it makes sense to get it signed all these were the old foils like this is the original foil it's kind of like in not so great shape this is newer, um, Double Masters. I spec'd on this card and, and like, yeah, it went up, right? It's a utility land that's good with uh, Mind Slaver and infinite combos. And yeah, I got these guys. 
these Herborgs are really expensive before. I actually no, they just keep getting more expensive. It's such a good land. Yeah, you can see I have one from N15. I don't have the Planar Chaos original one, but then this one's what? From from the Vault Realms. And these are the originals for Unhinged. Luckily I had some from before. Um, I got these when they were like maybe 10 to $20 each um, for very bad condition. So like none of these are like near mint, but yeah, they, these are nice. They, they kind of crept up over value, but de um, definitely they dropped, like they halved in value when Double Masters came out, which really, really sucked. Like they shouldn't reprint these lands, right? But they did, and a lot of these old ones, their price got really, really messed up. But these are beautiful. I wish I had more, but I kept trading them away. Back then I was trading like, like a foil swamp was like $50. And I remember I traded that for five fetch lands back when they were $10 each or something like that. Yeah, these are these are nice. They're, they're just gonna go in my collection. Um, the un, unhinged ones, I'm gonna play. Like I, I play them in decks. Here are some more. Um, these are from Unstable, one of the newer sets that came out for, for um, I think the newest one is Unfinity, but then Unstable was before that. And these are just really nice. They're they're hard to get too. Like I think they come one in every box or one in every two boxes. So. Yeah, back then when I was opening some packs, I luckily got one of these. It's the only one I opened, and then this one uh, I got in a trade. It was really nice to get these signed. And they're in really good condition too. <clears throat> and as you can see, my favorite color is blue. I bought a lot of these islands back when they came out in Double Masters. They're still pretty cheap actually, but I have like a whole stack of them. And you're gonna see why. Like, I'm gonna use these um, to update one of my decks, actually. I'm gonna count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think that's all I need for later. <clears throat> yeah, here's some more. And then here are the non foils. I, I, I decided to get non foils signed too because they're, they're really cool, they're just really good looking. The islands look so good too. Like if you compare it, compare the border and frames. This one looks awesome, and they're they're actually quite expensive um, foil. They're like thirty or forty dollars each, and those probably are worth even more. Like yeah, I'm saying these in foil are worth like thirty, forty. These, I want to say five to six dollars. It's not that expensive anymore. But who knows if they're gonna go up in price. For me, it's more about playing. Um, some of, yeah, some, like I said, some I'll sell to recoup some costs. But yeah, they look really good with the signature on it. Um, I was debating like, you kind of want to when you want to pin back your deck, you want to make something very noticeable. You want to decide. Um, like nowadays, artists, if you do one signature, they will primarily sign in black, silver, or gold. Um, but usually just black. But Johnny Vaughn was able to do gold on all of these, so they look really nice. There's actually like a strategy to get your card signed because sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. Um, you, like especially at cons, you need to wait for your cards to dry, you need to, before you even put in a sleeve, they need to dry completely. Um, I know I've gone some cards like messed up because the artist was like very, very fast in signing and then, and then I screwed up too when like I put the card right to another card. So if I did, if I stacked it like that really fast, You'd see some gold here, and you don't want to see gold on the back of another card because it's sharpie, right? It's not going to rub off too fast, or it's not going to rub off at all. And here are some more. Forests look really good. Mountains look okay. I think the islands still look the best. And I got even more. Um, these are the OG unhinged ones. I think I only got islands and swamps signed because I wanted them for a deck. The difference is, right? This is non-foil, this is foil. But you see how the island is in the middle? That means it's unhinged. To the If it's to the left and has the, the more master symbol, then it's it's like a newer version and got reprinted, which is kind of lame. Like who knows what else they're gonna reprint and kill in price. These are nice. Uh, I had a lot more swamps. I put in a mono black um, crick deck. It's like a suicide black semi-competitive fun um edh deck that i have yeah these are nice 
Yeah, I'm putting that on my box. These are all gonna be double sleeved later on. I don't know if I'll have time in this video to do that, but I'm gonna double sleeve them and just put in my collection. Uh, I have like a really big binder. So let's see. <clears throat> the next thing I wanna do is just kind of go over. Um, oh, for obvious reason. Oh, another video started playing as soon as I talked on the computer. This is my Urza EDH deck. As you can see, it's like the full retro one. This guy tanked in price. It's insane. But yeah, here are all the islands I have before. And these are really nice too. I just want to show them off a little. These are done by Mark Poole. He's such a nice guy. Like, I've seen him at a lot of conventions. He's more than happy to sign a lot of these. Um, and he's just been in the business for a long time. And he's like one of the OG, like, <coughs> kind of like the original artists of uh, magic and uh, this island is actually a, it's actually another reprint too from alpha beta unlimited and revised like this island is iconic but then this is the dominaria remastered one and it's, and it's in a beautiful foil so these are what i had before in in this mono blue edh deck i'm gonna take them out and replace them with an hinge because just because it just looks so nice and full art's cool too, but these are like, I'm still gonna keep these for other decks. They're just really, really cool. Um, and I have some more signed cards here too, actually. Yeah, this is the Winter War from Artiden. Um, Richard Kane Ferguson was another one I got at Minneapolis. This one um, is altered by Ken Meyer. Um, this one I got in, I think it was Vegas, actually. Vegas Magicon. It's either Vegas or Philadelphia. This one is a very recent one. Shadow Signed um, Foil Force of Will from Dominator and Master Borales from Richard Kane Ferguson. He takes his time with um, signatures. Really nice guy. Like He was in huge demand. The lines were super long. I think uh, after I, I mean, when I start sleeving these, I'll tell you about my experience at um, Minneapolis. Another one, Mark Tieden. Shadow Signed um, Revised Mana Vault. Really cool. This card dropped in price a lot, so I picked up a couple and um, put them in my decks after getting them signed. Yeah, they're really, really cool. Jewel Lotus. Everyone knows this. Um, I actually sold off all my English copies because I feel like they're not going to really retain any value after it gets reprinted. It, you'd have to wait a long time for it to go back in value, but this is a Japanese one. Rainbow signed by Elena Danner. She likes doing rainbow, but the signature itself costs like $25. It's pretty expensive. But I figure I am a commander player, so I'm not going to get rid of this card anytime soon. Yeah, but it depends. She's, I think she's one of the more pushed artists that magic is kind of like, that magic is just I think she's gonna have more, she has a lot of art, she has a new secret lair, and she's at pretty much every single convention that they're gonna come out with. She's like one of the sponsored guests, and um, I think they they get to come and, like, they don't have to have a, like, they're featured, pretty much. Yeah, but she's a very nice lady, um, yeah, really nice person, like, she likes to talk to you, like, when... Um, you're getting your signatures. Same with Richard Kane Ferguson. They're all like really, really nice people. Like, I would say you really want to support your artists. Um, I'm not sure how much um, Wizards pays them when they commission things, but then it's good. It's always good to just kind of like, like, really take pride in what you do, and like that's what she does, right? Like, they take a lot of pride in their art, and and it just looks so good, right? Like, I have a playmat um, that's also signed by her too, and it's one of the playmats that I use all the time. Yeah, support your local artists. I think it's very important. Another one by Liz Danforth. This one's really cool. I wish I got more of these signed. Like, this is such a good blue tutor. Chris Rollis, Splash Slush Storm. I wish I had this in foil, but I don't have... I don't think this exists in foil. Soul Ring by Martiden. Rhystic Study by Therese Nielsen. I know this is, guess, this is a hot topic, right? Like, she is... Um, Kind of polarizing on the magic front but i'm like oh, i don't care it's like i just care about her signature i don't really care about what she thinks because not everyone will have the same political mindset and I, I think that's fine as long as you don't like do something bad or like target someone or say something bad um 
but yeah, I mean, Teresa Nelson, yeah, it's like, I don't really agree with what she says politically, but I just like the car and the art. <laughs> I really just think her art's really good, but I don't, like, I can care less about what she says. But um, you do have to realize when you play ca casually with people, having a car like this in your deck can kind of set off some notion that you're like, oh, you love, you love this artist, you, you're like her or something. But I mean, she seems nice, but her political ideology is just maybe a little skewed, but in the end, art's art, signature's signature, I think it's fine. Or else, like, don't even play this Rustic Study, right? Like, why are you playing this card in your deck? Because Therese Nielsen drew it. Stuff like that. Like, you can't really... Like, everyone still plays this. This is still the most liked Rustic Study and the most expensive Rustic Study. And it's, like, completely needed in Mono Blue, right? This one's really cool. Dance got... Um, Ponder is also, also, like, one of the coolest cards because it's used in so many formats. Um, it's, it hasn't been in that many sets, um, but this is like the foil one for M10. The first printing of this kind of art, where the hand is holding out like three spheres. And <clears throat> for this kind, like, I like getting stuff altered too. Um, and I love Demon Slayer, the anime, so I got these. If, if you instantly realized who these three characters were, like, I'm really happy that you you realize this is like one of the top animes right now and it's like it's just such a beautiful anime like i didn't read the manga because i don't want to spoil the anime for myself so yeah if you don't watch demon slayer you should watch it it's on netflix um all three seasons of it like the second movie the, the first movie the mugen train one made me freaking cry and yeah these like this guy's actually my favorite character <laughs> zenitsu yeah so this is a cute car that i'm probably never gonna like get rid of yeah this is a n nice thumbnail too <laughs> brainstorm Bar by mark pool from secret layer this is a sketch one um mark pool usually signs down here but then for these cards he signs down here for some reason which is really cool because i think it's like it is like a sketch card right like the the other brainstorm that's not a sketch also it, like he signed here and it looks really really cool but yeah really nice guy yeah, the rest is not signed. It's just kind of foily and cool. Oh, this one's signed, actually. I don't know why I don't have that up there. This is also Mark Poole. It's um, one of the game day or something promos. Yeah, the rest is just mono blue. If you didn't know how to play Urza, you you just play Urza, protect him, and you sack. And he comes and play with a contract token. You sacked out to Polymorph, and then you get infinite mana, and then you just draw your whole deck and then loop it through windfall and everything i don't have a windfall but i have a nice proxy so yeah i'm just gonna sit down and unsleeve um but yeah like i did like i've been trying to make it an effort to go to all of the magic cons i've been going on they're, they're pretty fun i went to vegas i went to philly went to minneapolis barcelona i don't think i'm gonna go to because it's in spain but Vegas in September of 2023, I'll go to because that's fairly close by. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Yeah, I just go with some friends. Um, we play Commander all the time. Like I don't even I don't like playing any of the events. But usually Friday and like Friday, I'm just there to get artist signatures because that's when like like imagine um, everyone's still at work on Friday, right? And then um, you you go because there's less people, right? usually saturdays are packed sundays are packed and then it kind of like dwindles a little bit in the um in the end of sunday but still friday is the best bet to get your, all the, your signatures done but now there's a rule where for example like john avon's line was really long chris ron's line was really long and richard kane ferguson's line was really really long so you can only um, get five to six cards signed, and it was pretty bad for like Richard Keynes Ferguson and I think uh, John Avon. And then Chris Ron was doing like, I think maybe 10 to 20. Um, but it, if you're getting a shadow, shadow signature, that cons uh, that's considered as two signatures. Shadow signatures do look the best um, to me, but like for all these islands, I didn't really want to pay double just to get sing um, shadow signatures. Because right now they, they look awesome already. So, um, 
yeah, like it's it's a fun event. Um, you meet some cool people, you get some cool things. Um, like there's some exclusives, um, like like this mat here. It's it's really hard to find, and you can't really get it from Ultra. I don't think you can get it at Ultra Pro's store, but um, now they're coming out with these kind of mats where they're stitched, and they look a lot better. They feel better, and they don't um, exactly get like sometimes the edge of the mat will tear if you use it too much these are stitched and they're pretty damn nice um but they all um they are also like three times the price of a regular mat as well yeah but it's it's good it's like i, I never went to any of these conventions before maybe i went there to trade but now it's kind of fun to tr go trade get artist signatures and play with your friends, um, enjoy the time that you have there. Um, you also want to, yeah, like meet more people, kind of get the sense of the market. It's easier to buy singles there too. Yeah, I have like a lot of these EDH decks and I always use this kind of uh, deck box. Um, yeah. Let's see, I'm gonna sleep like, I have a 16 um, page binder. It's like, I think the more popular ones are now like 12 page, but then I have 16 page now. It's quite awesome. So I have like, it's a whole gallery to show off all these thing, signed cards that I kind of keep to myself. But I'll, these will just go back in the binder. <clears throat> yeah, so. I think Commander is the biggest thing for Magic right now, and, and certainly Magic is trying to monetize that right now too. Everything's a Commander, pro and every set has a Commander product now. Um, every set has legends that um, don't really matter for Standard, Pioneer, and Modern play. Sometimes they do, but it's primarily for Commander. Uh, commander is just the cash cow of wizards right now and they and they know that that the players know that they want to get people to play standard by extending the three-year thing but uh, like i can care less like i hate things rotating i'd rather have things that don't rotate and things that don't get reprinted it's just right now everyone's kind of struggling for that um for that money because of inflation debt crisis everything else it's it's quite turbulent but uh, for me, my biggest holding is just my commander decks and reserve list cards. Uh, I have a full set of dual lands. I recently got a Mox Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond. Those won't go down in price. Um, I don't have power. I don't really care about it either because power is not really played in commander unless you have a, like a no ban list deck. Um, it's, yeah, it's just... This is fun <laughs> when you play with your friends. Yeah, these are uh, dragon shields. I usually double sleeve in dragon shields. The thing about these that I don't like playing with decks, I I'm actually transitioning all my dragon, sh all my decks from dragon shields into katanas now, because uh, katanas are they're opaque. You can't see the back. But magic cards, um, I actually have a friend who makes some proxies. You can see the proxy because he differentiates the proxies with. With a non-magic back, and you can see the outline of it, and it doesn't look good. So that's why my dragon shields I'm just going to use for binders and collection, like keeping. And katanas are going to be for decks going forward. I'm trying to think what is the best stuff to kind of. Don't have that many of these sleeves, but. Oof. Yeah, it's slippery. I think these I'll put in the sleeves later, but these cards are really cool. Because I, I only got like a couple of these signed. Yeah, this is kind of a break from the normal Pokemon grading stuff. Uh, They've been just very slow recently. It was probably like a month turnaround time for the monthly special, but now it's taking like two months and 
Uh, it's kind of whatever. I've been just having fun playing EDH with my friends. Pokemon, Pokemon's kind of like, it's, it's, it's hype has died down a little bit. Uh, prices got like halved and there's a lot of easy deals. If you want to collect um, PSA 10 Charizards right now, it's a perfect time to, if you think they're going to go up in the future because they're very cheap right now. Uh, so it's, uh, the one thing I don't like about, um, Pokemon and like stuff like MetaZoo and NFTs, for example, it's, it's all hype driven. Like go watch King of Collectibles on Netflix. It's, it's, that's like also hype. Pawn Stars is kind of hype too. Um, a lot of things like people would rather put money in their bank or in long-term assets like stocks or um, real estate now. And I think that's the correct thing to do. Um, if you can, if you know you can resell and make a profit, then sure, put it in, in magic cards or something like that. But it's it's pretty hard to do that now in like the Pokemon market. You can still grade things, but acquiring acquiring um, graded cards takes more. Acquiring raw cards to get graded takes um, more effort now. Yeah, and Pokemon is just they don't people don't play it five percent of people play it it's more for oh i want to have it i want to have the collection i want to um grade it i want to complete my binder collection that type of stuff but it's the biggest ip and i think it has a lot for it but magic is just like it's enjoyable you can put hours and hours of time in the game itself and that's very appealing to me Pokemon is just like, oh, I have all these great cards. I have it locked away. It's hard to look at because they're all big ass slabs and stuff. Um, it's it's still cool to have them. I still have. I, I still want to collect and uh, sell them, but I only want one of each PSA ten Charizard. I don't need multiple, so I usually just sell off whatever I don't need, right? Yeah, these just look freaking beautiful. Wizards does a good. Um, good job having artists and kind of providing value and like there's a lot of people who kind of fanboy over artists too now um it's very very there's lines and lines at magic fests and uh compared to pokemon um magic like you can play these in your decks right if you have a mitsu mitsuhiro rita charizard yeah you can have it in your case but it's probably too expensive to have outside your outside of a safe or something and it's just you can't really look at it too much you can just like oh you have it you can put it in your pwcc or ebay vault now like but but magic cards are meant to be played and and um you know like yeah that's why i kind of like this a little bit more it's, it's more fun it takes hours and hours uh to get in line and get like five to six signatures but um, there are ways to get around that too, such as mailing it in, but it's also, there's, there's risk, there's postage, there's a lot of the artists don't want people to send them out um, as like a business transaction. So you have to go through like friends and family on fa um, PayPal, or you have to, like it took me, I paid for these, this signatures. So I sent this out in February, got this back in May. And I sent it out and, um, John a Avon's agent it took a while to get these and, and there was like a like a 21 pound fee for for uh, I think for duties or something and he wouldn't like pick it up at the post office even though it was sitting there for like two weeks unless you pay that fee and stuff and yeah it was like it's more uh, troublesome than I expected because they're not like PSA, right? They they don't need. There's no turnaround time. They can do whatever they want, and that's why I didn't get these back in three months. It took a long time for them to. Like, even after I paid, it took a month, almost like a month for them to ship it out. But when they did ship it out, then it got to me really fast. So I appreciate that a lot. But it's still better than waiting hours and hours in line. Um, it's just very risky, right? Like. I also got cards signed by Douglas Schuler, and there was it was very hard communicating. But when I got them back, I was pretty happy. 
Um, so I appreciate the work that they did. It's, it's more of a business transaction than like a fan transaction nowadays because artists know that they can make money off this. And that's fine because like, it's like you have the right to sell whatever you have too, you know, but you have to know how to, you have to have good feedback, uh, feedback on eBay and be able to market it right. Yeah. But these are like le very legit too. Like you have to be able to not as spot counterfeit uh, counterfeits there's a facebook of group for signatures too which i would join if i was um, a signature collector there's a lot of people like wondering like what's the uh like is this signature legit whatever and then there's tons of people who are like oh every like the price of a signed card is just three dollars plus whatever the raw card value is but it's like they just want to buy for cheap um, or else they wouldn't be in that group, right? Like these actually, like it takes way more effort now and for a shadow signature, it can cost $10 more now for um, just to have that shadow signature because artists are charging a lot more now. There's like my my rainbow, um, my rainbow jewel lotus, that, that was a $25 signature. So I'm not gonna let go of that for like, because all the time I spend in line, like all the effort handling it, um, that's, that's a big burden too, you know. So I would not consider this as raw value plus $3, because no. What about the shipping? What about the waiting? What about the, the transit? Like the, um, there's like no insurance. What if they lost my package? I'd be down like $2,000, you know? So this is not worth that little, you know? So like... These took a while to get, so I was like, I would not sell like sell these for like whatever people take from the group, you know. Like, I'm not gonna do three dollars plus. Yeah, it's gonna take a while to sleeve all these cards, but um, if you are interested in seeing my binder full of signed cards, just comment below. And yeah, like I, I will probably have more of these coming. I do have uh, I do have a whole batch from Minneapolis too that I can show but yeah these are the John Avon ones they're they're freaking beautiful like I have a whole stack of them now just for my decks for my collection for everything blue is just like one of the best colors because of force of will and counter spell so yeah if you enjoy playing C um, CDH or EDH um, let me know too and yeah like spell table is really great I just got into that uh, playing with friends is really fun too um but yeah thank you all for watching and um yeah disclaimer it's not a pokemon video but a magic video and uh if if you are a pokemon fan i hope this kind of tells you some more about this kind of format and this this new world of magic the gathering and sign cards but thank you so much and i'll see you next time